is a beautiful morning here in Nice, Serbia. I think you can tell I'm wearing Molly sunglasses. I literally have lost mine and don't know where they are. I actually even nearly wore shorts this morning, but this city, the third largest city in all of Serbia and the birthplace of Constantine the Great has so much history, so many things to see. So we are out pretty early, relatively early this morning for us anyway, because there is a lot of walking, a lot of those sights and things to see are actually sort of just outside the city centre. We've got these like cool apartment blocks, the apartment blocks here are very unique here in Niche, well just on the outskirts of Niche anyway, but yeah a lot of walking to do, a lot of sights to see and hopefully a lot of food to eat. Before we get into the history of this city Molly, we need something to eat, I'm starving. What are you going to have? That is the question. There seems know. to be so much stuff along the streets here, more so than in the actual city centre, right? Mm, there's a lot of meats and everything like that. I'm so close I don't know to if it's a bit batch, so the I barbecue here should be great. I don't know if it's a bit early for some big meat dish right now. Thank you. Come on, love. Thank you. Everyone keeps commenting, saying we're going to turn into a barrette, but when in niche, you have to have a burek. Do you know why? Because apparently Niche has the best burek in all of Serbia. They actually have a burek making competition annually, so I'm expecting big things. And stay tuned for a comprehensive burek video in the best burek pakara <laughs> in all of Serbia. But we got a smaller portion as well, so mm -hmm. that's what I mean. Small portion, great burek. And we're actually walking to the Skull Tower now. This city has a lot of history, some dark history, some positive history. Two tickets for the tower. And uh, does that include the concentration camp as well? Yes, okay. That's fine. Yes. Two please, thank you. We have got our tickets. They were 200 dinar each and that includes your entry to the Skull Tower and the concentration camp which we will be visiting later. As Matt said, there is a lot of history here in Niche. This is actually a, I suppose you could say it's a grisly reminder of the war or the battle between the Serbians and the Ottomans and it's actually located in such a lovely area. There is a little river or stream behind me. Didn't expect it to be like this. It really is a stark reminder of what happened. The, the skulls, they're there, they're behind the glass, they're in your face. These, are, these aren't pretend, these are, these are real people from hundreds of years ago. The Ottomans actually constructed this wall. It would have been a, a lot higher, sort of like a, an in your face thing. Serbians kept it and now it's like, it's sort of like a sign of freedom and it, it, it generated the power if there was a future invasion to resist that. There was 952 skulls on it, there's now around 54. It's just harrowing what happened, it really is. It's hard to put into words. The skulls and the remains are actually left in this chapel to leave it as a reminder and to commemorate those that lost their lives. Uh, I know that they did actually uh, bury them somewhere else but they've kept these ones here in the chapel. It is just a very surreal experience seeing them for your own eyes. That really is a different experience. It massively reminds me of the, um, the killing fields in Phnom Penh. They have a very similar thing actually. They have like a, a room full of the skulls and it sort of reminds you of things that have happened and that these things shouldn't happen and again. Like war is never good and it results in mass, mass tragedy, um, but the park that it is in is beautiful and we're going to head back now to the centre of the city, another mile and a half walk. Um, you could probably cycle if you had a bike or a car but it's a lot of walking for us today to see something a little bit more uplifting. Just off of the main square is Tinker's Alley. I love <laughs> the nickname. It dates back to like the Ottoman Empire, hence the cobbled streets, and is actually a street of and restaurants. And it's packed today, right? And bars. It's so cool. You're everyone's not, everyone's breaking the COVID laws. You're not actually supposed to be standing outside, but everyone else is. So I'm hoping we'll be able to get a takeaway beer and stand outside.
Chivelli. Chivelli. I love this street. Everyone is out in the bars having a beer. I'm not sure whether. Well, actually, no. I think you are. I think you're allowed to stand outside. You just can't sit. You know what rules are like there. They're always a little bit dodgy. Um, but again, Serbians are so nice. We ordered a beer each, and then they ended up giving us another beer each for free, which we didn't want. We wanted to pay, but they just wouldn't let us. The hospitality here is so good. Again, this statue here, I'm not sure the name of it, but this statue behind me, it's a sight to see in Niche, but we're in a little bit of a rush now due to the, the free beer. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now on the run to the fortress. unbelievably busy today obviously the sun is shining it is actually very warm it is not a fake sun as Matt has mentioned before but we are walking through the main square has everything you need got it's windy right now obviously it's got all of your shops and it has some fast food chains as well and a very famous hotel and a very famous statue not sure who the statue is or what the statue is <laughs> My research has been absolutely terrible. I'm only interested in the sun and the views from the fortress. They are doing a lot of construction as well. So it doesn't look as good as it normally would because this is going all the way to the bridge. I cannot believe how busy it gets. As soon as there's a little bit of sun, I'm pretty sure every Serbian hits the streets, hits the parks, they're out but we've crossed the Nisava river from the main square and we've made it to the fortress here in Nice which was constructed in 1723. It's actually a pretty impressive fortress. The views are amazing. You can look over the river, the main square and it also has this huge park which actually was part of the old citadel, the Roman citadel which was found over two thousand years ago but it's pretty cool we're going to check out the view we're actually running now because they gave us that free beer we are running to make it to the concentration camp actually before it closes. Money sunglasses because of the sun but the walls in here are actually two kilometers long and the park's really nice that you've got like a is that a train they have a train for the kids going through do you want, do you want to jump on <laughs> It's not me that's the child, it's you. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely me. I would definitely jump on the train, but it's a nice place again to chill out. A little bit like Kalag Megden in Belgrade. It's a cool spot with cafes, restaurants, and great views of the city. Currently walking through the sticks of the fortress. We are literally in like the outskirts of the fortress. It shows how big the walls are here. And the fact that you can just take a path and be on your own. Do you know where we're going though? No, not really. That way somewhere. According to the maps, here's a cross. We have to get across to the other side of the wall, basically. Got to jump. Should we jump? <laughs> Ready? Can I push you? Please? After a um, short walk, a really nice walk actually through the park by the fortress, we have made it to the Red Cross concentration camp. Uh, so many Jewish and Serbian people lost their lives during World War II. Um, I'm not gonna say too much before we go in. I'm definitely not gonna speak while we're in there because I think it's a poignant moment to reflect on what's happened. But um, I don't know, it's gonna be hard. We're gonna go in there and see what it's like. And obviously we'll speak to you afterwards. That was a very difficult and 
very harsh thing to see. I always find things like that really, really difficult to even speak about because it's unbelievable to think that things like that were allowed to happen not so long ago and things like that still do happen. I do find that absolutely unbelievable, but it is extremely informative in there. I would highly recommend it. Uh, it definitely is a very sombre thing. We were actually really lucky because she was about to close. So if you are here, try and get here a bit earlier so you can maximise the amount of time there. But it's kind of crazy. The Germans that occupied it and were in control of it at the time before they left actually burnt all of the documentation. So there was nothing to suggest that this camp existed minus the actual camp itself. So that a lot of the information that they've gathered has been gathered from survivors and things that they found. For example, you'll see in there, there was a lot of pocket watches and documentation of people to suggest who were there. The list is not complete. So there are a lot of people still out there, possibly who have not been named. I think that is one of the hardest things for people if they haven't been accounted for, so you don't know what happened. However, I would highly recommend it. If you are, we're not the biggest history buffs, but it is definitely something that you should go and see. We were going to head up to the Bubanj Memorial Park um, as that is where the prisoners were taken and it is there to commemorate the deaths of the prisoners. I think around 10,000 were actually killed up there. So there is a three fist monument that you can go and see uh, and it does have a viewpoint of the city. It is there to remember those that lost their lives. However, we do think that it's been quite a lot to take in today. So we're not gonna go and see that. We are gonna head back into the city though, take a walk back through the fortress. <laughs> We have walked back into the centre to get some food and we found this place called Tost, which apparently is like made in niche. I don't know if it's like a traditional sandwich that everyone makes or eats in niche anyway, but it's like a toasted sandwich. And we didn't know what was in it. We just asked for two of like your best seller. That was pretty much as far as the English could go. Um, so we're just waiting to see what we get now and then we're gonna hopefully head back round to that bar we're at earlier. After they give us a free one, we've got to get one more from them. Obviously paying this time. Um, before we go back, because they said they're going to close at about five-ish. Amazing. Thank you very much. This looks massive. We should have just got I think, one. I think we've ended up with a, a double cheese. I think double that's what cheese, it is. Yeah. I think that's how it translates. Anyway, oh, it's got ham in it as well. So it's got ham. I don't know what else, but it is huge. Everyone seems to be getting it. It's like a ciabatta, isn't it? Uh-huh. It's like a ciabatta roll. Ham, cheese, sour cream, pressed together. Mmm. The question is, does it taste like a pizza? Mm-hmm. It's a little bit like a calzone sandwich. Really? If that makes any sense at all, but it's like cheese overload. You've got, it's a second huge one. We should have definitely just shared this. I know. Do you know what? That toasty was like, if it was a toasty, I'm not sure what it was. It was maybe too cheesy, if that makes sense. It was just a little bit too much cheese added to the cheese that made it the double cheese. Anyway, we've come back to our favorite bar, cafe bar. Tesla to have one last beer. I think it's needed after the day. Niche is an incredible city. It's got an incredible main square, pedestrian street. Of course, this street, the bars, restaurants, unfortunately, obviously aren't open. But it's also got that dark history. But I think if you come here, you've got to see them. But see them in the sort of the right order. So we talked to the Skull Tower in the beginning of the day, and then in the evening headed, or late afternoon headed to the concentration camp. I think if you've done it all at once, it does become too much. But like I say, an amazing city. We've had a great beer, we've had great food, great square. Pedestrian Street, concentration camp is amazing. The fortress, incredible views over the river, but we have more days here. Don't worry about that. So stay tuned for more videos going forward in niche, especially dedicated to food. See you in the next one.